last week, I taught you why it's important, imperative, mandatory to love yourself, to love yourself first, to put yourself ahead of everybody in your world, including your kids and your spouse and your parents and your best friend. So today, as I told you then, I'm going to tell you how to love yourself first. And I kind of live my life differently for most people out there. So chances are you haven't heard what I'm about to teach you. The first step is always to hydrate yourself with good clean water that your body can assimilate and use. Now you're waking up your body, running your meridian up your back, over your head, down to below your nose, and up the front of your body to down below your lip. Do this three times. A famous world-class boxer used to swipe down and then deliver the knockout punch. Don't ever swipe down. And here I am fixing it back up. Now we're waking up the brain. First we're doing what's called a cross crawl. I'm crossing the center line. You can do it elbow to knee. You can do it hand to knee. Or for fun, you can do it behind your back, hand to foot. This is telling both hemispheres of your brain work together, which is how you want to function. But sometimes you need each side of your brain to work independently. So you only do that a couple times. You don't want it lasting too long. And then you always finish up. You want both sides of the brain working. And so you're going to do a cross call crawl. So you're going to do a cross crawl however it's comfortable or fun for you. And energy top to bottom. That's two fingers below your nose, one under your lip, and the other hand over the navel. It's just gentle rubbing and then change hands. Front to back energy is all running right. Now we're making sure energy is running accurately left to right. You want to take two fingers on top, your thumb on the bottom, find your K27, the kidney points. They're at the ends of your collarbone and they'll be tender when you touch. And the other hand again goes over the navel, which is your body's energy center. Okay, now you want to be sure your energy runs accurately front to back so you have one hand over the navel area other hand back massaging gently at the cossacks and then you switch hands this is the most fun part because it feels so amazing when you're done you just got your feet planted and you're just shaking let your body be really really loose and move up and down and move your head and just feel into it. Relax. It's going to feel really, really good. Do whatever you want with your hands, with your head, and just keep shaking. And then, just to really wake up every part of your body, you're going to go blah, 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 all kinds of crazy sounds that you like to make. Your body's going to feel really good if you can maintain this bouncing for three minutes. And the best part is when you finish it and you just kind of stand still, you're going to feel a chi running like crazy through you. And it's going to feel real fine. This may be the most important thing that you're probably not doing for yourself, and it's waking up your lymphatic system. People don't do this. You can just march in place. If you have a rebounder, that's a whole lot more fun. It's real important. You're picking your feet up and moving them down. Virginia Satir founded Family Therapy, and she taught us the critical lesson about love and hugs in particular. She said, we need four hugs a day just to survive. Eight hugs a day to get by. Virginia Satir said, we need 12 hugs a day to thrive. Are you getting 12 hugs a day? 
Are you giving out 12 hugs a day? Almost always, but not always. Almost always, when you give someone a hug, you get one back. On the subject of hugging, how do you want to hug? That's really important. You see, your heart is over slightly to the left. And if you're hugging like most Americans, if you got a hug and you put your right arm up and your left arm down, your heart's over there and their heart's over there. And if I were to muscle test you after that hug, you'd find yourself and your partner weak. Literally losing energy, because that's a hug that stole energy from you instead of feeding you. So hugging, four to survive, eight to get by, 12 to thrive. But how you do it, really? matters. Next thing that I think is very, very important is having nourishing relationships. In fact, people who are in successful relationships, it could be a romantic one or it could be a friendship, but people who are in relationships are healthier. They're more successful. They live longer and they're definitely happier. So if you're having trouble being somebody's friend or connecting with somebody, go out there and join some groups, get active. Or you know what you can always do? You can volunteer. When somebody seems to be depressed, that's one thing I say right away, go volunteer. Because when you're doing something with and for somebody, Yes, you're nourishing them, but you'll notice you're nourishing yourself. Relationships matter. The other thing that's really important is smile. Because when you smile, you're changing your body chemistry. And you be sure, if you haven't already, to go to the show notes and get your copy of the eight steps to turn any frustrating ho hum moment into a happy one, very literally. And one of the steps in there is to do happy shares. In fact, after the first brain injury, that's how I got myself healed. I started doing happy shares. What's a happy share? It's speaking something, and I like to speak it, so I used to write it, and I'd fill notebook after notebook after notebook. So now I just speak it. It's something that leaves you feeling happy, peaceful, calm. It's not about your kids feeling better, or your parents, or your spouse, or your friends. It's about you moving to a happy place, a happy moment. And when you're in that moment, your posture's going to improve. You're going to be taking more air in and you're just going to feel better. So that's noticeable. Now, you'll hear from thousands of people probably, it's important to meditate. Well, when you meditate, you don't have to follow anybody's rules. You don't have to follow any special breathing. You don't have to sit a certain way. You don't have to do it a certain time. You don't need a mantra. If you like to have a guided meditation, do that, but just do something that gets you in the silence. And if you've never done it before, do it for a minute. And it doesn't matter how long you do it. It doesn't matter if your eyes are open and your eyes are closed. What matters is that you do it. And after you succeed at one minute, go to three minutes, and then five. And eventually, if you can work yourself up to 30 or even 60 minutes, boy, are you going to notice a difference in your functioning, in how your brain works, in how you feel, and in your energy. You're going to be putting out a different, calmer, loving energy. People are going to be attracted to you, and they're not going to know why.
they're going to feel this different energy coming from you. Now, you are in charge of you. Other people will tell you what to think and how to feel. Especially when you're a little kid and your parents are making rules for you. The thing is, where those rules come from? Do they really fit for you? Some things like, don't run with scissors in your hand. Yeah, they're designed to keep you safe when you're little. But take a look at the rules that are governing your choices and your decisions of how you want to act and the activities you want to do and the people you want to be with. Do the rules make sense to you? If they don't feel good, if they don't make you happy, stop doing them. One of my friends gave me a card she made. I said, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And that's what I'm telling you right now. If it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. Why would you do something that doesn't bring you to a place of love and joy? Now, people will tell you different things. Some people like to criticize. Some people like to judge. Be aware when somebody's judging or criticizing they're speaking volumes about how they see themselves and it very likely has zero to do with you and who and how you are. Now some people come into your world or rather you come into their world because there are certain life lessons you want to learn. Now we choose the family we're going to be born into and I was born into a family where when I was very little, like three, four years old, my dad would teach me things like how to play ball, how to wear a glove. We're talking about an adult glove on a four-year-old's hand, how to hold the bat, hit a real baseball. But then things happened and my dad didn't live with us anymore. And my mom went to work all the time. So basically, I had to figure stuff out for myself. Now, I didn't feel annoyed and I didn't feel sad about it because you know what? I had total freedom. I had total independence. Yeah, I had to figure out a lot of stuff that seemed really daunting, but guess what? I figured out the tough stuff as well as the simple stuff as cooking. On a gas stove, I had a light with a match when I was four. I figured it all out. And you can figure out stuff if you choose to. When I was growing up, my mom said, I could do anything, talking about me. Did anybody teach me? No. Did she need something repaired in the house? Yes. Did she ask me? Yes. Did she give me advice? No. She just knew I'd figure it out. And when I go places and I find people who are afraid to get up and talk in front of others. I don't really quite understand that because I've been performing since I was five. I have total confidence and I feel very sure of myself whether or not I know what I'm doing. I'm out there doing and if you don't get out there and do and do new stuff you've never done before how are you ever going to develop confidence? How are you ever going to be secure in you leading your life? So messages come to us in all kinds of ways. And I am very, very glad you joined us here today. I'm Reverend Ellie Beard, and this is Let's get metaphysical, connecting heart and mind. Remember that you can always pick up something on Audible that's going to nourish whatever it is you want to nourish. Are you inquisitive about, I like science, I like art, I like sports. I read everything by everybody and I listen to them also. 
but maybe you have something in particular you like or an author you like to follow. You get to choose a download of your choice and you have a whole 30 days to explore the site. It's a really, really fun site. I found all kinds of things there that I didn't even know existed and I got to in joy and you can do that too. And I have a special gift for you. Not just the happy now, but our uh, first book that I ever shared on Amazon, it was actually on three different bestseller lists for 15 months. So what I'm doing is offering you a, spe a very special offer where you can get both the audio and the digital. It is a digital book and you can get them at the link that'll be in the show notes for a really silly price because I want you to take advantage of it because all these people wrote to me and told me how it changed their lives. Remember to join our Facebook group so that you can jump in with questions. Tell us who you are, where you're listening from, how you started listening. Oh, and on that subject, I super appreciate if you share today's episode or just share this podcast with at least two people you know to spread the word. Because I don't do this for me. Yes, I love to do it, but it's because I love to share what I've discovered in my life. I've been teaching since I was seven. That's what I do. I share. And everything that I share, it worked for me first. So I figure if it works for me, it'll work for you. Usually it does. So join the Facebook group. That link is in the show notes. The book that you can get, the special offer, in the show notes. Also in the show notes is a link to our show site where you can listen to or watch any of our 126 episodes. Thank you again for being here. I look forward to being with you next time. And in the meantime, enjoy. That's capital I N, capital J O Y, every moment. Because what I guarantee you is nothing in your life's happening outside of you. It's all happening in there.